danger. What's happening in the dining car? Is there blood? Who's killing who? Where do they get shot? I have to see. Things are really starting to get exciting. Yes, 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 yes. Playful puppy dog nature aside, it speaks volumes of Lad that in a series chock full of immortal, super powered gangsters, he's the one you'd least like to meet in Dark Alleyway. And he's neither immortal nor super powered, he's just completely out of his mind. You're a freak. Homicidal lunatics think you're a nutcase. Your attempt at flattery is so ham handed. Well, to a degree, there is a certain method to his obsession with murder. The people I love to kill? It really get me jazzed. Never see it coming. Maybe they're thinking about what they're gonna have for dinner. <laughs> Just like you were, right before <laughs> I walked in. I'm tempted to say that out of any character on the list, Lad most epitomizes the kind of villain I was looking for when I made it. But the one part of the deliciously evil master that he's missing is, well, brains. Which explains his placement at number 5 instead. So his cranium may be full of rocks, and he prefers mayhem on a whim to evil plotting, but save that, he could not be more horrifyingly wicked or unbelievably fun. Yeah! Go, lad, go! Wait, wait, wait. Oh, screw it. Yeah! Some psychopaths who live to kill do it because they don't know who they are or what they want, and they go crazy from the confusion. Lad knows exactly who he is and what he wants. He likes killing people, so he surrounds himself with confidants that have the same interests and goes to town ransacking a train. No special reason, I mean, he makes one up, but it's so ridiculous that I've long forgotten what it really was. Even though we are gonna shatter dozens of lives inside a crowded train, wearing white is gonna make the blood look so pretty. He finds sadism arousing, so he falls in love with, of course, a masochist idea, why not? Apart from his love for his fiance, he doesn't seem to have any redeeming qualities whatsoever, so why is he so incredibly lovable, I wonder? It defies all logic, but well, so does Lad. Makes sense, right? He doesn't take anything personally, and he doesn't care about pulling jobs for money. It's all about the fun, and in a way, there's something admirable about that. I don't know what it is, but it's there. Why else would this yield applause? Too bad. You were so close, but you couldn't figure out how to talk to me after all. What? I can't let it look like yours go unanswered. You're just so sure I'm not gonna do this. Hooray! You show that small child. You. Sadly, Lad's lack of foresight is his downfall when faced with the transcontinental's guardian monstrosity, the Rail Tracer, who kills all of his men and then outsmarts him into throwing himself off the train, sparing the passengers from any more of Lad's idea of a good time. The party was good while it lasted, but Lad being Lad, it's a lot more fun to watch than get a personal invitation. <laughs> Aizen Sosuke from Bleach. Aizen Daicho. Hmm, that's funny. Aizen's on the list. I don't know, I thought he was pretty cool. I mean, as far as being a butt-kicking bureaucrat, which is basically what Soul Society's government is, let's face it, he seemed like a really nice guy. He's strict with his subordinates, but still acts as a friend or father to them when times are tough, and when he was murdered, I was pretty darn sad. So it turns out that that was just a dummy he had set up to fake his own death, and knowing Aizen, I'm sure he had good reasons for it. Well, thank goodness he's alive. I mean, his Lieutenant Momo just looks so happy. Aizen must die. 
Yeah, I'm not fooling anyone, am I? Many of you are further along in Bleach than I will ever be, and know darn well that Captain Aizen is a horrible, corrupted Shinigami whose massive ego has long ago eaten away whatever was left of his heart. He's also an excellent actor, making the revelation of his true design so hard to accept that they take episodes to reveal in full. But far from being boring, they're possibly the best episodes in the entire show. Aizen's been lying through his kind, diplomatic smile since the early days, when he spent his time on experiments to turn Shinigami into hollows as a super-powered hybrid, getting Kisuke framed and exiled for it. After that, he turned several of the captains to his side and used their help and the powers of his Zanpakuto over and over and over again to fool all of the other characters and the audience into thinking he was dead while he took up a seat in the Hollows Kingdom of Hueco Mundo and gathered his army of Arankar for the mounting coup now coming to fruition, wherein he will master the powers of a hollow and rule soul society with absolute omnipotence. Just... Wow! Of course, revealing your whole evil plan to the hero is never a good idea, because now Ichigo can unleash his massive bunkai and... maybe give Aizen a paper cut. Yeah. Bleach fans, be afraid. Be very afraid. Aizen is the only villain on this list, or in recent memory at all, who has no setbacks, no weaknesses, and has yet to see even a smidgen of karma for any of the vast multitude of sins he has committed. Not to mention you just have to hate how cool he is about it. I know good is always supposed to triumph in Shonen, but if things continue to go like they've been going for hundreds of episodes, I'd definitely be fearing this Reaper and his unwavering smile. Let's see you try and talk your way out of this one, if you can. Light Yagami from Death Note. <laughs> Kierkegaard once proposed that the root of all evil in the world was not selfish need, but boredom. Maybe it sounds silly until you've met this ambitious young honor student here. Like Sensui, Light Yagami, far from being pure evil, is a pure kind of evil. The tragic result of a snow-white self-righteous legalism splashed with malice that instantly turns it pitch black. By chance, he obtains the notebook of a Shinigami, enabling him to instantly kill anyone he knows the name and face of with a stroke of the pen and what dramatic strokes he takes on paper and in the execution of his master plan. Why not become a worldwide judge, jury, and executioner? In the information age, Light can effortlessly search for the names and faces of every criminal on Earth and eradicate all bad people from the world. Well, whoever he considers bad people. It's not enough. This world is still rotten. With too many rotten people. There was no other way the world had to be fixed! A purpose given to me! <laughs> Only I could do it. That, of course, includes good-hearted policemen who were assigned to investigate him, and have them disturbing the almighty cause, and the women he woos and manipulates to be his instruments of propaganda until they rust and burn. Join me, Kiyomi, and you will be the goddess of the new world. Kiyomi Takara. Suicide. January 26th, 2013. 2.32 p.m. Burns to death by setting fire to everything around her. Including everything she wrote on. He may not be as unblemished as he believes, but he knows the extent of his power and exactly how to use it. Let's face it, he's just smarter and more attractive than anyone else. He works fast and efficiently, and the snake is a fantastic liar. If the villain is a snappy dresser with a silver tongue, and the good guy is a greasy gnome with poor people skills, who are you gonna believe, right? I mean, he makes this look good. I'll take a potato chip... and eat it! That astonishing charisma is the scariest thing about Kida. Not only does he have the people of his world completely fooled, He's got a frightful number of people in the real world enamored with him, too. Hunt out a den of Death Note fanatics and you'll hear remarks like, Light's an anti-hero, and he had good intentions, and he really deserves to win. 
The greatest defense for this dictator worship seems to be that Light was a good person who was misled by the Death Note, which was truly the evil instrument that possessed him. I've got news for you, Kira Clan members. For people that love him, you give him far too little credit. Anyone calling themselves God in episode one of anything has their heart in entirely the wrong place. And I... I will become the god of this new world. In the end, the Death Note is just a book, and Light? You yielded to the power of the Shinigami in the notebook, and you have confused yourself with a god. In the end, you're nothing more than a crazy serial killer. That's all you are. Nothing more, and nothing less. Lights fall from power that turns the arrogant idol into a slobbering infant. Matsu, you idiot! Who the hell do you think you're shooting at? I know you understand, so kill the others! Shoot them! What are you waiting for? Write down their names! Write them down! Where are you, Misa? Where's Takara? What do I do now? Bumps him down to number three overall, but he leaves a legacy as the god of death who took thousands of lives without mercy while the world watched and cheated. Legato Blue Summers from Trigon. I found you, Vash the Stampede. Three little words I know I gotta address. Why not knives? I mean, Knives is the mastermind. Knives is Legato's master. He owns him, tells him what to do, and gosh darn it, Legato does it. Well, Knives may own Legato, but Legato's not his slave. On the contrary, he needs him to survive. Legato runs the regeneration plant, hires the other guns and manages their talents, and he's happy to do it of his own free will. This in itself makes him far more evil. Knives wants humanity exterminated because they scare him. He's not human, and humans have mistreated him. Legato is a whole new box of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction was better than I'd hoped. You're fun. <clears throat> and to think I could kill every man, woman, and child here in the blink of an eye if I wanted to. He wants humanity exterminated because he has damned it from his childhood as a sex slave. From the newborn baby to the thieving outlaw, all deserve a slow, painful death in his eyes, which he is happy to give them with his limitless telekinetic abilities. I mean, forcing someone to shoot themselves is child's play. Why not make them claw through their chest and tear out their own heart? What the hell are you doing? It's simple, you're the first to die. Legato can kill off a whole town by simply cutting off their brain functions, but it's a lot more fitting to walk them out of the city into a meat processing truck and paint the town monument with their blood. Knives may order him simply to kill, but Legato chooses and relishes a torturous demise for all humanity, including himself. The day it all ends is near. I advise you to make good use of the time you have left. No one else comes close to Legato's breadth of influence and depth of depravity. He holds absolute power, and far from being heartless like Vicious or Aizen, he is passionate with the desire to kill, mutilate, and in regards to Vash, devastate for all eternity. Vash has faced dozens of horrible men in the past and never batted an eyelash, beating them with his impeccable superpowers and finding the good in them to turn the worst of men into heroes. But one look at Legato absolutely terrifies him. There is no weakness in his cold yellow eyes and he can't be stopped from killing hundreds of people, from Vash's friends to his own allies and some that rest in between, in a game to break Vash's spirit and send him crawling back to knives. A task made easier by his constant presence inside Vash's mind. I decided to do this as my humble way of exhibiting grief for the loss of a good friend. How'd I do? You again. Damn you! Are you going to draw? <laughs> you seem to think you've never killed anyone, but I'm afraid you're very sadly mistaken. You've killed countless people, including the gung-ho guns and your friend. Nicholas D. Wolfwood. I was forced to do that! I had no choice! 
Vash may be a Superman, but ultimately Legato wins their battle in the most twisted way possible, dying by Vash's own hand. Ram Saver. <laughs> a worthless.